Welcome everyone to this quick workshop from Grip Security. My name is Josh Mayfield. With me is Asasha Shani, and we are going to take you through a couple of uh, interesting tidbits today and really center the focus around identity security as it relates to access, identifying where those identities are spread out throughout the SaaS landscape, and really proactively taking control of things and ensuring that secure access is realized and oftentimes with the tools you already have lying around. And so um, with that, we're just going to get right into these things and then jump over to the demo to show you exactly how to do a, a quick and easy enrollment into something like single sign-on. Um, when it comes to identity security, soft, I mean, we talk about this all the time because it's what we live in, but regardless of what the numbers say specifically, they're big. It doesn't matter which source you go to when it comes to the level of brute force attacks, uh, how often credentials and identity are at the top of the list each year when it comes to attacker targets. And the motivation has really changed over time. And one of the things that that we see, and, uh, we identify is that when it comes to customers, their, their enterprises become dependent on strong identity security. And, and namely, the things that they're looking for just First, is just visibility. Where are my identities? Where are they spread? Where are they sprawled? And trying to understand what kind of relationships those corporate assets are in. You know, an identity is an asset. It's not a person, you know. And so where are these assets in relationship? Where are the risks associated with them? And trying to uh, at least administer some semblance of control when those identities are used uh, and proliferated throughout SaaS. And and then one of the things that is critical, of course, is that these identities, as we continue to see them, are the top targets and they're growing. Um, in addition to that, the identities actually are our best enforcement point. So we can actually leverage identity to bring about effects, secure effects that are beyond our reach, right? Because the identity goes there. And so if I can put the security policy, if I can put the security controls at the identity, then they can be shielded whenever and wherever SAS is used. And attackers are actually getting this point when it comes to just how much we've surrendered to SAS services to operate our entire our business, from factory to finance, from DevOps to engineering to HR to IT, everything is run with SAS. And so if you can exploit the identity, well, then the whole field opens up to you. I mean, it's a new form of lateral movement when it comes to a single credential or a single compromised login that can then gain access to the whole to the whole shebang. And so when we think about these distributed points of risk when it comes to an identity, one, they're growing and attackers are using them for much more than just exfilling data, but direct conquest, being at the controls of the SaaS, which is at the controls of whatever business function that is. And so the importance of this identity security has really elevated and there's a reconceptualization, you know, of, of identity as uh, a piece of my corporate identity, of my asset class of an identity, and it's being spread out there into all number of places. So give me visibility, understand the risk, and then take action against it. Today, we're going to talk about how you can do just that when it comes to something as simple as single sign-on. And at Grip, that's really what customers rely on us for, which is identity security whenever and wherever SaaS is used. Um, and being able to apply that at the identity level and take it with them to whatever kinds of SaaS that they're using, whether that be even security and production SaaS, think like Circle CI. You know, remember that that happened uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, when it comes to rogue and abandoned SaaS, you know, that kind of thing you use occasionally and then toss away, but there's an identity still lodged in it <laughs> when it comes to uh, that particular app. Uh, and being able to drive the the visibility, understanding the risk. Uh, drive the access control and integrate across that entire security stack. And um, when it comes to integrations and identity, you know, you can really pick something uh, <laughs> when it comes to what you need to know about your identities and what else needs to know about it. And so delivering that SaaS in insight, delivering those actions into the rest of the security suite is is really what, what customers depend on. And today we're going to show you a simple use case. And I'm going to turn the, the conversation over to you, Asaf, uh, to take us through what happens when you discover an app and you want to make sure that those users are using a SAML enabled single sign on um, and oftentimes it can be right you know right there in your stack already with Azure AD. So Soft you want to take us through it? Yeah sure. Uh, thank you Josh. Uh, so 
what I'm showing you right now in my screen is basically just a demo environment that we are, that we are using. It represents a company with 19 employees, and these employees have 12, 000, uh, 1,200 uh, SaaS. Of course, that it's just a demo environment. But what I wanted to show you is how Grip is showing you who is using which application, how they are authenticating to it, and by having this sort of list, being able to just I, uh, prioritize which ones you should connect to your single sign-on and by that uh, eliminate the risk as much as possible. Yeah. So what I did just now is basically filtering the SaaS applications in sorting these SaaS applications in the organization by their security score. The lowest the security score is, the riskiest we believe that they can be. And the way that we identify it is by the type of data assets that these kind of apps might contain. So as you can see, Atlassian, uh, Asana, might contain some data about the task in your organization. Dropbox can contain some, some file sharing apps. And by knowing who is using what, you can tell basically what you should manage and what you should be worried about. Mm -hmm. We are seeing now that in the organization, we don't have any application that is connected to our single sign-on. I mean, we haven't started it yet. But let's say that I want to connect Asana because I know that in Asana I keep all the uh, all the tasks that need to be happened in my organization. I can see that the users in uh, for Asana in my organization it's Danny, Daniel, Modi, uh, Idan, and I can see also how they are authentic currently authenticated to the application. So I can see that uh, five of them are using app credentials, username and password. Two of them just signed in with their Google account. And I know that I want to connect it to my Azure AD in order to use single sign-on to authenticate to the app. And by that, eliminating the risk of these credentials go all over the place, uh, just like Josh mentioned before. Uh, now, connecting an app to a single sign-on to Azure AD is a super simple task, uh, especially for these uh, well-known apps. There are tutorials in uh, Microsoft explaining what we should do inside either in the application and also in our Azure tenant. I'm not going to show you what, how to, how to connect a specific app to uh, your single sign-on, but it's truly a process that takes a few minutes. What I do want to show you, I'm going to connect it to my single sign-on right now. And I want to show you how it looks like in Grip, and let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so that works really well. Um, and so one of the things I would say is that, folks, it, one of the things you might have noticed on the Azure page there was that it did require an Asana license type that is single sign-on enabled. Sometimes there are different licensing tiers when it comes to the particular SaaS app, and that does need to be enabled. Again, just check your own license tier to know whether or not it can be added to, to single sign-on, but that's one of those prerequisites to consider. Um, but taking us through here to the results now that we've enrolled it in Azure AD, I think we see a change now. Can you point these things out to us, Asaf? So as you can see here, uh, you remember that five of these users used to be connected with their uh, app credentials, uh, username and password, and two of them were using their single their sign-in with Google method. Now they are all provisioned to our single sign-on, uh, to our single sign-on uh, in Azure. So all these users will not be able to authenticate with their previous method by but using only their uh, Azure uh, SSO. You can see that the SSO percentage in the organization is 100%. And if we will take a look on the SaaS, SaaS applications in the organization, uh, I will filter to, to look on Asana. 
we can see that it is auto sanctioned. So group identified that it's connected to SSO, it's 100% SSO. Automatically, their security, the security score of the application got, got, got up. And basically, in this way, we will know how not to look on these applications. We will be able to filter these out or to, when filtering by the riskiest apps, it won't show um, on the top. So let's go back to Asana again. Uh, you probably ask yourselves, okay, tomorrow a new person is joining and he wants to use Asana too. So what, what, how can we identify that? So this is kind of a combination of how you configure the app inside your Azure. And no matter what, if a user is signing into the application, either with app credentials, meaning that he signed up for the application using his email, it's, it varies from SaaS to SaaS if they allow you to do so once there are some people in the organization that are assigned to SSO. It's not a, it's not a, it, it's, it's different. So if someone was able to sign up with their corporate email, it will be shown here as a user with uh, an app credentials authentication method. So the, the SSO percentage will decrease. If the app will not allow you to do so, there are uh, even apps with different licensing and each license which allows you to provision your whole organization or allows you to provision only a certain amount of user under a specific group. So if you were allowed to join and you just joined the application with your SAML, then it will just automatically add here the, the eight a user using their SAML and you will be able to basically monitor every signing that these users do inside the portal and have kind of a grip of everything that is happening in your organization on your on your on the apps that are connected and not connected to your single sign on. Right, right. So folks the, the configuration may be different to get the desired effect, whether that be to channel the user back to only signing in through their Microsoft Azure AD SAML connection. It could be open to be able to use app credentials in that way. It could be still applicable to use some other OIDC uh, connect, but no matter how that, that SaaS app is being accessed by one of those identities, Grip's going to flag it, identify it, and let you know the manner in which that SaaS was accessed, including then to take action if you if you so desire for certain identities in certain situations on certain apps to be enrolled in SSO. Um, but regardless of how they're accessing that, Grip's going to identify it, flag it, and, and populate it here. And so, like I said, folks, it's a pretty simple use case of just identifying a SaaS app, knowing whether or not it has SSO coverage, and then quickly applying it. Um, and with that, that's the end of our workshop today. Just wanted to show you that quick use case and send you all on your on your way and we'll see you next time on our on our next workshop thanks so much asaf thank you josh